topic is, should life-saving procedures be performed for free? <coughs> Today I'm going to talk about the real-life ongoing occurrences that take place each and every day to be neglected, a life-saving procedure that could potentially shorten the lifespan, or worse, kill them. Many times people get the idea that when you have just been diagnosed with cancer or you have a life-threatening disease, you receive the, you receive the operation and you are just left to be drowned in debt. But what you don't know is that patients are being offered a cheaper option, offering a least expensive way out, in other words, only postponing the risk of a greater disease. It's a short-term fix for a long-term problem. By not resolving the issue, you're putting a band-aid on something that needs stitches. People take it that you are saving money, you are offered a cheaper way out, you are right above the poverty line, or even worse, picture you are right below the poverty line. You have a household to sustain and a family to provide for, and jobs that need attending. In a nutshell, according to the ethical and legal implications of managed care, people are offered people are offered to choose a way out that they can afford, to only do more damage or even worse, shorten your lifespan. How are you helping that patient in the first place? As a whole, you are offered a choice that you know you will choose. To help minimize the chances of your loved ones being neglected, a life-saving procedure due to the fact that they cannot afford it, there are hospitals in Orange County such as Kaiser Permanente, a medical facility that offers <coughs> free procedures such as colonoscopies. According to the CDC Center for Disease Control, colorectal cancer, also known as colon cancer, affects both men and women, and is the second leading cancer killer in the United States. Every facility differentiates regulations and programs offered to people on whether or not they provide programs that can qualify patients to afford the procedures they need. In my opinion, there's no need for patients to receive improper, improper care that could potentially drown them in debt or shorten their lifespan. With the awareness of this problem, we can create more programs and provide a better way to offer the best care for free. And never forget that before you are a patient, you are a person. Thank you. Douglas, do you care to elaborate? Well, I didn't know what she was trying to persuade us on. It felt more like an informative to me. Um, like she was informing us that hospitals have these free programs so you can get those life saving procedures. Um, I thought it was really short. And that's about it. Yeah, it was, it was very brief. I was just getting settling in and thinking, okay, we're getting started here when it's done. It seemed to feel very uh, abrupt uh, in regard to the content. Um, I, I agree also, <laughs> it's a little ambiguous as to what the exact nature of the argument is, what you're trying to persuade us of. I guess the idea is that there are um, opportunities for life-saving procedures that people are not taking advantage of or that people might believe that they uh, have to choose um, to ignore problems because they don't have financial resources and you're saying in fact they don't have to make those kinds of choices that there are options for them or maybe you're suggesting that we ought to make all of those things affordable and available for everybody regardless of what their medical care situation is but i don't get any information that talks about who's being denied access to these sorts of tests or treatment um you know i i don't have any data that explains uh that people who don't get access to this are harmed in any way uh it, it like i said it just feels like it prematurely finished just as you were getting started on the subject so i think that's problematic um the 
the absence of a specific thesis statement. There's no preview that sets up what the structure of the speech is going to be. We got uh, one or two brief references to a piece of information. For example, you mentioned uh, the Kaiser program that allows people to uh, get this kind of uh, screening. You also had some statistical information about uh, how frequently people die of colon cancer. So. I, I mean, there's some research in the presentation, but I'm not sure what it's in aid of, and that's uh, very problematic. Okay, thank you.